I'm going to attempt to spend the next seven days in solitary confinement. I kind of feel like an animal right now. Like, I feel like I lost all my rights as a human. Well, guys, I had a feeling we'd be back. Now, I don't want to be that guy who comes on here and says, looky here, I told you so, but, uh, well, I told you so. About two weeks ago, I made a video expressing a concern I had about how I think that Mr. Beast videos are getting a bit too extreme. I said I feel like we are nearing the limit of what I feel like you can really ethically do here on YouTube. YouTube, and that his videos are starting to resemble human testing more than they are YouTube content. Now obviously there was a whole lot more said than that, but that's basically the short of it. A lot of you guys agreed with me, a lot of you guys didn't, a lot of you guys were in the middle. But for the most part, it seemed like most people were in agreement, whether they supported it or not, that Mr. Beast videos were getting kind of extreme. In the video, I said this. I feel like this kind of video where you have another person there, you're allowed to do certain things, you see other people relatively frequently is probably where we have to draw the line, right? Because if not, what's next? 10 days in solitary confinement? 5 days in a sensory deprivation room? I mean, where do you guys think this becomes unethical? And today, Mr. Beast uploaded a video titled I Spent 7 Days in Solitary Confinement, where he does just that. I had a completely different video planned out for today, but I kept getting comment notifications on that Mr. Beast video I made, all of them referencing this recent upload. So I checked it out, and well, here we are. So today, I kind of want to revisit this topic, talk about some of the stuff that people mentioned in the comments of that last video, talk of what I think about this video, and then talk about what I think this kind of content has done and is doing to YouTube as a whole. So before we get into the actual video itself, I'd like to address maybe the most controversial thing I said in that video, not really what I was expecting, but it was my claim about what Mr. Beast has made on YouTube. I said that the days of the $1 to $2 per 1,000 views estimate being accurate is far behind us, and they are. Unless you're making like short form gaming content, nobody is making just one to two dollars per thousand views anymore. They're not. Now I based my estimate off of Mr. Beast making about ten dollars per one thousand views and looking back that might have been a little bit high, but a lot of people were saying that the eight to twenty dollar range I quoted was insane and it's it's just not. Not only do I know what I make, on YouTube. I also know what a lot of other people make that I am in correspondence with. For a lot of YouTubers out there, a $20 RPM is nothing really special. That's just what they make throughout the year on average because of their niche. Now Mr. Beast is gonna have a lower base RPM from ad revenue than some other channels because his channel is so big it reaches so many people that a large part of his audience is outside of the United States and ad revenue from countries outside of the United States just pays less. That's just the facts. So if I were to estimate it again, I would probably say that Mr. Beast makes like five to six dollars per 1,000 views just from his ad revenue alone. But that's not really what I was saying. A lot of people don't take this into account because the way YouTube does it is kind of silly. But RPM is not just how much you make per 1,000 views. It combines a few other things. One of those things being how much money you make from channel memberships. Mr. Beast has 223 million subscribers. I would not be surprised if a million of those people are channel members. That's less than half a percent of his audience and at five dollars a month, after YouTube's cut, that's about an extra $30 million per year from memberships. So is estimating a $10 RPM for Mr. Beast probably a little bit high? Yeah, I'll admit that, but I don't think it's that far off. And for most US-based creators, $8 to $20 is really not that insane. You've got to keep in mind stuff has gone up quite a bit since YouTube banned ad blockers and, you know, inflation. Over the last six to eight months, YouTube RPM has jumped pretty drastically. Or maybe I just got really lucky. I don't know. Okay. Sorry, didn't mean to spend so much time on that, but a lot of people commented on that. It was like the top comment on that video. And I just wanted to address that first before we got into the actual video today, because I feel like it's the least related. Now, one more thing I'd like to address real quick before we get into the new video. This is probably the most common thing I saw going against my argument. And it's the sentiment that these people could leave whenever and they were compensated. And that makes what they're doing okay. When it comes to some of Mr. Beast videos, I would agree with this. When it comes to the silly stuff that's basically like law lotteries and giveaways where you have to do kind of crazy stuff to try and win these things. I can understand that argument. Gambling is in the human nature. We like risk. People play the lottery in hopes of winning life-changing money, and most of the time nobody wins it. You know you're not guaranteed anything, 
but it's fun to try. If it's that kind of Mr. Beast video, not that big of a deal, right? These videos are not that. Let me try and construct my thinking here with a bit of a thought experiment, I guess. Let's say I had $1 million burning a hole in my pocket and I wanted to give it away. If I offered you a 1 in 1,000 chance to win the money, if you could successfully fight a crocodile, would you go for it? I feel like most people would say no. Why? Well, because it's only a 1 in 1,000 chance. Even if you do beat the crocodile, you're probably not going to get the money. Chances are you're not going to beat the crocodile and you're going to die. But even if you do beat it, you're likely going to come out with some lifelong injuries. Permanent changes to you that you can never get rid of. It's just not worth it. However, if I guaranteed you the money, if you could beat the crocodile, I bet a lot more people would be willing to try. This is how I view these videos. Now, obviously, the crocodile example is a bit extreme. I'm not really trying to compare the two. But 100 days of isolation is not good for you. Isolating yourself in a grocery store is not good for you. Spending seven days in solitary confinement is not good for you. It's things these people would never, ever do if they were not offered this kind of money. Sure, they don't have to do it. Sure, they can opt out. But why would they? What's a little bodily harm for hundreds of thousands of dollars? If you offer your friend $10,000 to run across a highway and they get hit, are your hands clean? Sure, they didn't have to do it. Nobody forced them to run across the highway. But why were they doing it? Why did they suddenly choose to run across the highway? Just because these people don't have to do it, you cannot ignore the fact that there's a person offering them guaranteed life-changing money if they do. Most people are going to throw caution to the wind even if a doctor is saying, hey, being isolated for 100 days is really bad for you if they hear that they're going to get a quarter of a million dollars for doing it. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that either party is faultless here. I'm not saying the contestants shouldn't be responsible and look out for themselves, but Mr. Beast should also be responsible and recognize the kind of positions he is creating for these people. And I think that's pretty fair. So, with that being said, what does this new video mean? I honestly think it means that we are not too far away from seeing Mr. Beast put somebody into solitary confinement or a sensory deprivation room and calling it YouTube content. I think we have gone too far. To me, this is no longer really YouTube content. This is human testing. A while back, Vsauce made a video pretty similar to this in a much more scientific fashion. I think it was three days he spent completely isolated in a room like this. No sort of communication or interaction whatsoever. If you haven't seen that video, I would highly recommend you give it a watch. I think Mr. Beast tried to emulate a lot from that video, which is something we're going to get into a little bit more later. Spoiler alert, I'm not sure if I really believe this video is real, but Vsauce's video was very obviously presented as a scientific experiment. It was not like a YouTube challenge, it was an experiment. Scientists were involved, doctors were involved. The risks were made very clear. Mr. Beast's video, I don't know if I can really say the same. Yes, they said they had a doctor. Yes, they talked about some of the stuff that could happen, but in my opinion, it was just not done correctly. It just seems a little bit distasteful the way everything was presented when you consider that millions of people have spent an inhumane amount of their life in solitary confinement. And they're putting like fake edited montages of him going crazy with dramatic music and him saying stuff like he hopes he doesn't go insane. I don't know, just to me, some questionable choices were made. One thing I can appreciate though is that Mr. Beast did it. He's the one in solitary confinement. He is the one testing the waters. Now whether or not he actually did this, I'm not going to go too far into during this video. I'm sure he probably did. The one thing that really threw me off while watching this video is the doctor. Some of the stuff he says makes me think he's not a real doctor. Like at one point Mr. Beast was trying to climb the walls and the doctor was saying stuff like he's reverting back to his primal nature. Like no, I think he was just trying to climb the walls to pass the time. I don't know though. I'm not a doctor. Don't think that guy is either. All things aside though, whether or not this was a good idea for Mr. Beast to make this video, whether or not it was tasteful, what I'm really concerned about is what comes next, both from Mr. Beast and all the other big YouTube channels that are starting to emulate Mr. Beast's style of content. Like seriously, I feel like if you tried to release a video of this style maybe five years ago, it would not be received very well. I think what's happened is over the last three or four years, Mr. Beast has slowly made every single consecutive upload more and more extreme to the point where we're at now where nobody's even really questioning what's going on. I mean, seriously, this guy's last three uploads have all been about him putting somebody or multiple people into some form of isolation. It's just not normal. And I think it sets a pretty dangerous precedent for YouTube going forward. The top dog on YouTube, the most subscribed, the most popular, however you want to put it, has historically always been a game of personality. Whether that means having a good one or a bad one, generally the reason people got to the top spot of YouTube was because people liked them or liked hating on them. I mean, seriously, think back to who used to be the most subscribed people on YouTube. Smosh, Fred, Ray William Johnson, Ryan Higa, PewDiePie. All of these people just had personality 
personalities that people seem to gravitate towards. These days, I don't think that's enough to be top dog. Now look, I'm really not trying to be mean when I say this. I feel like it's going to come across as rude. That's not my intention. But I don't feel like Mr. Beast really has much of a personality at all. I think it's obvious that the reason he's at where he's at is because of the kind of content he makes. Now, am I saying that it's a bad thing for your content to be the main draw for people watching you? No. Do I think it's bad for your main draw to be having big, high-budget videos? No as well. I've seen a lot of people go against sentiments like mine by saying people like me don't like Mr. Beast because his videos are sort of corporate, they're not really personal, and they have these huge, large budgets that most YouTubers can't attain. That's not my issue. Videos of that nature, of that niche, have been around forever, and they've pretty much always been the most popular videos on YouTube. I mean, just think Dude Perfect like 10 years ago. My problem with Mr. Beast, and what I feel like he might be inadvertently encouraging, is the bigger and more extreme is better mindset. What does any of this have to do with PewDiePie and Smosh? Well, why do you think we saw a huge surge in gaming YouTubers when people like PewDiePie got so popular? Why do you think skit channels used to be so popular in the early days of YouTube when Smosh was running things? People emulate what's on top in hopes of finding that same success. Now, I'm not really saying that that is the responsibility or even the worry of channels like Mr. Beast, but it is something that I think that people like me and you, people who use YouTube, should be keeping in mind. A clear majority of the people who use this website have agreed that the kind of content that's going to dominate YouTube for at least the time being is content that pushes the limits and is as extreme as possible for no other reason than to be YouTube content. And I think we're at our limit. I don't know how much further we can really go past this before someone needs to step in. I think Mr. Beast is clearly exploring a pattern right now considering what we've seen from his last three uploads. I feel like if his next video is spend X amount of time in solitary confinement and win X amount of money, we have officially reached the point of just full out monetizable human testing. A lot of people in my last video thought I was kind of overreacting, saying it makes good content, that it's obviously nothing sinister, it's just YouTube. I guess the last question I'll pose is if this being on YouTube makes it any better. If anything, I really think it makes it worse, because Mr. Beast gets to make money off of it. Would you find it perfectly okay if some random guy ran an experiment where he put two people into a room alone for 100 days, and offered them money if they survived while he surveyed them with cameras the entire time, and they got no privacy whatsoever? I feel like most most people would call that kind of weird, but because Mr. Beast is doing it, it's content. Same thing if a government was doing it. Would you like that? I don't know. I feel like Mr. Beast is in this weird limbo where he gets a lot of hate for the wrong things, but he also gets a lot of slack for the wrong things too. I don't know. I guess it evens out. Well guys, what do you think? Am I still overreacting? A lot of people seem to think I was in that last video, and I can kind of understand that, but at the same time, I just feel like this content is very, very weird, and since Mr. Beast has been doing it for so long, people have kind of forgotten that. Like seriously, imagine I dropped a video out of the blue where I took two human beings and put them into an isolation chamber for a hundred days. I feel like people would have some questions. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button and touch it. It's free. It won't cost you anything. But for now, that's all I have for you today. Bye.